Whew. It is going to be a hot one today, y'all. Shipping is light today. Which is good for you guys because that means I have plenty of time to film a spray session. Let's make something cool today. Well, hey, fish heads, Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates, and it's time for yet another spray session. I've been giving them to you lately. You guys ask for them all the time. It's your favorite thing of mine that I do, and I love doing them for you when I have the time to do them. So when I do have a little bit of time, I try and get them out to you guys as quickly as I can. This is going to be a fun build today. This is a bull gill, Mike Buca, bull shad, bull family of, of swim baits, and he is out of Georgia and make some pretty phenomenal swim baits at that. Um, this is going to be a mine cichlid. It was sent to me by a customer that lives in South Florida. Does a lot of, uh, more. Th there's a lot of exotic species. For those of you that have never been to Florida, number one, when it's safe to do so, I suggest you do it. Go fish, go fish South Florida, um, whether it's the Everglades or ditches. Uh, there are a lot of peacock bass, there's a lot of mine cichlids, tilapia, just some pretty phenomenally looking fish. Um, this is going to be one of those, hopefully, today. So a Mayan cichlid is usually really dark and very bold colored, but Mike asked me, Mike Jensen, which is the customer, asked me if I could kind of do, we'll call it a tween. It's not quite a juvenile, not quite an adult. It's uh, about this size when they're at that stage. And he sent me this picture up here. Um, and I like that. That shows the adult and the juvenile. So I was digging and digging and digging and I finally found a reference photo that I'm comfortable with that I think closely represents what's going on with the stage of this fish. And if you look at this picture, I'm going to put it up on this side. This shows the Mayan cichlid at that stage. And if you look at the person's hand in the background, it is pretty close. It's pretty close, folks, to where we're at with this bait. So this is going to be the reference photo that I use. It's about the same size. And if you look at it, it looks like you can see some red veining all throughout the body of this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this bone and I'm going to prep it just a little bit. And what do I mean by that? I am not going to put a full primer of white on here. I'm going to put some pearlized white, which is a little bit more transparent. And then we're going to shoot this with fluorescent red. And that's going to be my backdrop for the rest of this bait. So let's get started with that. All I'm really doing is I'm lightly coating this and then we're going to heat set this. Uh, yes, I, I normally tape over the eyes in these, but the eyes are so wildly different than what comes with these bull shads that I'm going to kind of trick it out and uh, do my own color on it. It does have a red and yellow eye with a very prominent um, pupil in the middle. So I am, uh, I'm going to build my own eye on that. Pretty stoked about that. So I'm going to heat set this and we're going to come right back on camera. I have loaded some fluorescent red into the cup and now we're just going to come back across. I've given it a heat set off camera and I'm going to dust this with fluorescent red. It's going to be the backdrop and the main primer color for this bait today. Because as you can see in the picture above, and I'll, I'll intermittently splash a larger photo of this just so you can see the veining through it. But one of my favorite things to do, obviously, um, kind of think out of the box and I can come back and reset all of the um, the pectoral fin and gill plates and all that kind of cool stuff but I just want to get this and I want it a little bit heavier in some spots and a little bit lighter in others so I'm gonna add some bursts here of darker coating because just like in fish, especially if it's a stressed out condition that the fish is going through, it's not necessarily going to be all perfect. 
um, it's going to look stressed. So that's what my take on this particular reference photo is showing me. And I'm going to do just a little bit of pearlescence to finish this off. And then we're going to heat set again. And we're going to leave this sit for just a little while and then come back to it. So I'm going to let this sit because it's, it's pretty humid down here, folks. It's, it's been a scorcher in Arkansas. I live in the Delta portion. of I'm about an hour outside of Memphis. So y'all know it's hot where I'm at. I'm cutting this metallic mesh. Yes, there's a link in the description below for you guys. I've had this stuff for a while, but it's back in strength. Uh, at least on Amazon. I know you can also find the stuff at Hobby Lobby, at Michael's Arts and Crafts, some Walmart Supercenters, but it's been kind of spotty at best from the reports that I've gotten. Um, it's easier for me to just grab all my stuff online, so that's what I try to do. Now on this particular bait, we are going to wrap the entire thing, and if you notice, on this 6 inch, it is exactly wide enough to where we can get this covered. So I'm going to not bore you guys and I'm going to do the covering off screen, but the note there is get it as tight as you possibly can. Hey, so one thing that I noticed that I don't want to be a factor when this bait swims is the difference in color between the inside and the outside. Now obviously we're not going to be able to clear coat on the inside. We don't really need to. This bait hopefully will get this crap beat out of it by fish but just lightly with a little bit darker of a color. I'm going to come in and just kind of level out this red so it doesn't look completely weird when it's swimming. And get just a little bit more. I'm just using a standard transparent red. This is a jacquard. and then just hit both sides to where it just doesn't look all weird. You know, if it looks really bright white on the inside, now just the paint, just a little bit of mist paint is not going to affect the joints or swimmability in this bait. But it also makes me want to come back and kind of give a darker appearance in some areas just to make this look like everything was intended to be like that. And we're going to heat set this now. And then I'm going to set it to the side just for about an hour just to make sure it's good and dry. And then I'm going to heat set it again and then we're going to wrap it. Two hours later. We are back. It's later. And now we've got this thing wrapped as tight as a Christmas present you don't want the kids to see. The difference on this bait, because it's so big, is that I had to do a little bit of wrapping and tightening on the face and the head of this. We can correct that later. A lot of you guys ask when I wrap these, um, do the little spots that are not painted because they're so tight against this bait, does that have an adverse effect on the pattern on the bait? And it, it can if you leave it alone. It, a lot of the times it's pretty simple to bury that, um, especially if you give it a lighter belly or we come back with a solid color over top of it. So it's, it's nothing that isn't correctable after this wrap comes off. How's that? About as good of an explanation as I can give you. Um, the other thing is to be mindful of where your eyelets are on this and try and hold on as you spray this and move your hand. You see how my hand is kind of cradling this bait so this doesn't, you know, if, if you don't have them on that eyelet when you hold something that's just loose you have a tendency to, to kind of pull that and move the wrap around so don't do that either. So now we're just gonna, I've got some opaque white back in the chamber and we're just gonna come up and spray at a 90 degree angle directly at the bait because if anything by chance is a little bit loose we, uh, we don't want it to kind of slide underneath. We don't want that paint to get under because we want to be able to see this red once everything goes on. I have to put a little bit more in here. I 
I'm just spraying up and down at that 90 degree angle and I'll bring a couple of strokes just across and then on the back side just angle that down and again try and get everywhere that you can and as close to the edge and where these uh, where these pinch points are with the gator clips as possible so that there's less to correct get all the way down there and you just it's okay if, if you can still see a little bit of that red because we're gonna turn this thing a really funky yellow here shortly there we go and we're gonna heat set this now now if you're looking at the reference photo towards the top of this bait just a little bit and towards the tail where that spot is you can see that there's just a little bit of sky blue so we're going to continue to layer this bait before we put those stripes on it I don't need a whole lot of this this is opaque sky blue that I've just put on I've recently reorganized all of my paints over here so I've got it going on finally because it was getting a little bit crazy it was just piling up so kind of built a a stand for it that kind of tears back and I can see stuff a whole lot better now it's like a bunch of skittles over here so I'm gonna add a dot of sky blue here and wrap it around the top of the tail and there and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of sky blue down in the middle here on both sides down in the middle and just a hint of sky blue on the nose and the rest of this I'm going to do a layer of bone and then I'm going to come back with that layer of yellow and I'm thinking about what yellow it kind of looks like a mustard yellow um, not quite as bright as like a French's but more like a honey Dijon or a spicy mustard if you think about those colors then uh, that's how I think about stuff I think about stuff and how I would look at it if it were something that I see in everyday life so I try and think about well, what else is that color and the colors that I'm coming up with that I have in my collection is this bloodline which I used recently injury ochre and then I've got this wicked golden so I think it's a little bit brighter towards the belly on this and maybe just a little bit of white and then a little bit deeper as we go towards so I'm gonna leave the blue alone and I'm gonna come back with some bone here and just uh, give it a and, and bone is it's similar in properties to white if you're using it as a, a primer layer and what that'll do especially if you're using yellows and you know anything at all about the color wheel is that's going to help build your yellows and warmer colors up better than white will white will kind of make everything let me see how can i explain this you know how like when you paint a wall and the color looks one color in the can and then it looks another color when the person that's at whatever paint counter blows a hair dryer on the lid and they put that little smear well the most paint can lids are only one color just stay with me on this so your paint color <laughs> is um, is gonna look how it would look if you have that chrome wall but your wall isn't the same color as a paint can either so you have to be real careful and you have to understand a little bit more about blending properties to really I hope that makes sense. So basically, so basically what, in long story, long story short, when you guys when are you guys home. And here's your case in point. It's going to give it a warmer, darker tone. And we're just going to kind of move around. And we are nowhere near done. Because we're going to keep on blending hit that yellow and then I'm just kind of moving around it's almost like paint by numbers 
You just want to kind of hit the edges where you were before. And we're going to put that lighter yellow on. And we're going to kind of blend across the top here. All right. Now we're going to get our yellow, our lighter yellow out for this and then probably come back across that with a little bit of white just to tone it down a bit more. And then we're going to build our scaling. I've added just a little bit of golden yellow into the chamber. Pick this up again. And the camera might not pick up the subtle difference but it's there, I promise. The customer will see it. And I'm just kind of going down, getting everywhere. And now we're going to come back with just a little bit of pearl white with the yellow still in the chamber and kind of mute that, tone it down. Along the belly. And there we go. I'm going to heat set this. Heat setting. I've added just a little bit of opaque white to the chamber. And I'm going to shoot across this bait from the, from the tail towards the nose with some white just on this middle part of the blue. We want hints of it, but we don't want it to overpower because it is just hinted that it's there. So you don't want it to take over the color because the color, for the most part, is yellow or a ochre color. I think ochre is probably the best way to describe it. And just cover that fluorescent red at the back. Now we've got something a little bit easier. Kind of get just a couple of... Go ahead and put the white on our pectoral fins at the same time so that we'll come back over that with that darker almost a greenish yellow and I'm going to heat set again. We are heat set and I've loaded just a little bit of pearlized lime and this is going to be for the face and a little bit towards the back on the upper portion of this back up towards the spine but not running all the way down the bait. Um, you can see and it's possible that it's reflection in this reference photo, but you can see that there is a hint of green on the big old melon head. So we're going to add that in at an angle because we still want to be able to see that yellow just into the face, up towards the back, get that gill plate, and up towards the spine. Just a little hint. And now we're going to start adding our dark layers. I'm not going to heat set this because we're going to add a little bit of darker color into it just to kind of give it that depth and texture like it's an actual scale and it's an independent moving scale, which I kind of like to portray when I can. Um, I want to, let's see here, I think I'm going to just stick with the, the detail black magenta. We're also going to put the stripes on this bait um, with this on with this net on. We're pretty much going to do the majority of this with this mesh on. So now we're going to come at an angle. I'm going to try and avoid getting this pectoral fin. Um, I'm going to try and keep that above it. But I am going to start and you have to lay it flat if you guys are watching what I'm doing. You just want to be able to see but there, there we go. Just a little bit. You don't want to darken it up too much. You just want to give it a little bit of texture. That's all we're doing here. At an extreme angle. Hit the back, down the spine. Run that gill plate. You can get a little darker on the nose but try and avoid this pectoral fin. I think I'm good with that. 
There we go. I like that one better. And, yeah, that's what we're doing. It's a pretty straight line down. There's just a little bit. I'm going to do some rough cut for stenciling for that. Um, and just try and... There we go. That should do. Uh, I might have to cut that. Method to my madness. Just, just stay with me. Okay. Now I can add this in. It looks like the larger part goes that way. Now up to this point I've pretty much been running around 35 PSI. Now that I've got black loaded in here I've, I've kind of reduced that just a little bit and I'm going to put this as close to the edge of this tail as I can just so I have plenty of room or as much room as I can get for the seven lines. The goal here is to make sure that it runs inside this blue, and it does, and so does the last stripe. It's a little bit lighter towards the back. So we're going to come back on the other side carefully, dab the paint off, and then just run the same thing, reverse towards the tail on this other side, as close as we can get it, as centered as we can get it. And now we've got on both sides, our dot is in. Next, I know I'm going to have to just lay this down. Let me bring you guys down one more time, just so that you can stay with what I'm doing. It's going to be a very light working from the tail back. We're going to put this in at number seven. five. And make sure you skip over or maybe just a little bit lighter. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Here comes number seven. And you're going to miss the gill plate, so go over it and under it. And there are your seven. That's Molly in the background, if you guys heard her. She is with us in the shop today. And then just come back and add the other side to this end. We're just finishing up this line. There you go. That is, I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. I think I want to add a little bit of dark around this eye, around the exterior of the eye before we flip it. I'm going to start by doing that on the other side. And we're going to come back and do the same thing upside down the exact same way. I've just flipped the bait upside down really doesn't matter, but and we're just adding these back in on the other side. There 
that way you'll have nice even lines on both sides and at the same time you're burying the mark with your airbrush and your paint that you made with that sharpie. And then this last one, go over top the gill plate and underneath at the bottom. Wipe off any excess over here. I know you guys, I've got a narrow screen so you guys can hopefully see a little bit better what I'm doing. And now we're just going to put the other side in. That one's good. This one be good. There we go, folks. We got our bands in. It's a seven band Mayan cichlid. You guys are going to see the reveal at the exact same time that I do. Let's see if those red veins are going to come through and add a little nice accent to this Mayan cichlid. From Michael Jensen in South Florida. There are a lot of reasons that I would want to live there. But I kind of like living out here in the country as well. Oh yeah, folks, that's what we got. That looks good. This looks good. Let me get you out of the blinding light and put you into normal lighting. You can really see that. Not overkill, but you can really see it coming through. Get a little bit of color difference around this tail because in the picture you can really see that you can there's like a, a prominent ring of blue on the outside of this dot. I went ahead and cut just a little stencil for this pectoral fin and it's a little bit larger than the fin is but that's that's okay we're gonna use low pressure I've got a sunrise yellow in here And we're just going to do the edges and then come in just like that. Heat set real quick and then do the other side. And we are going to darken this up just a little bit, trying to keep the transparency of it. Now one thing about these molds at Buca is that they're not always the exact same from one side to the other so be mindful of that which is why I cut it a little bit big because you can kind of work around that if you know it ahead of time and then hit the top of that and we're going to come back with some darker and just kind of shoot the edges of this and I'm not even I'm not going to clean the chamber I'm just going to add this black magenta in lower our pressure back down and now we're going to stick to just the edges here and the back That. And now we've got a little bit of a better representation there. I dare say we're ready for the red on the gill plate and on the throat, which is very prominent on the Mayan. For this, I'm going to throw a mix together. I'm going to add a little bit of fluorescent red. A little bit of fluorescent orange and a little bit of a regular bright red. Just a couple
couple drops. Bright red blends too fast, I think, in my opinion. Might want a little bit darker. Go ahead and add a couple more drops. There we go. That is a color I can live with. I, I, I wouldn't want it on my walls or anything, but I can live with it on this bait. All right, get that off. Set that to the side. chamber is clean, but because I really want that to show and I don't want it to mix, I am going to add just a little bit of opaque white back into the throat area and right around the gill plate where this is going to be. And you want to make sure you don't have any splatter and then just come in close with your airbrush. And then just run down that gill plate and maybe get just a little bit in there. Just give yourself an outline. I hope you guys, if I, if I did not show that on camera, I apologize. I can't do it again, really. Um, just run down with a close proximity on your airbrush. Run down these edges on this gill plate. And then just kind of give yourself an area where once you lay that back in with red, it's really going to look red. And then just kind of trail that off down to about the eyelid. And that's the area we're going to be working with with this red. Come back and drop our mix in the cup. Probably don't even need four drops of it. Just make sure we have, yep, that's a good color. And then we're going to come back where our white was. Make sure you guys are in frame for this part. And then just lay this in freehand. Low PSI, I'm running about 10. Trail that back. And then run up the side of the gill plate. And just kind of feather that off. And what I mean by feathering is that as you're running up, you kind of pull back on the airbrush and stop running it. Does that make sense, folks? I'm gonna run that back up. Now I know on this bait it's got an ear flap, but we don't need the ear flap, so we're just gonna use a general outline here. And just trail that off. We'll kind of hit that one more time. Grab some edges. One of the beautiful things about these bull baits is that all the scaling has been molded in, so you have so much texture you can work with. Texture is key when you're representing different patterns. And there we have it. And before we put in the eyes, I wanted to get a detailing brush, which I've modified even further, and just kind of give a little bit more of an accent to these pectoral fins. Just kind of run in between. And all I'm doing is I'm just following the uh, the pattern that's already here and I'm using the divots that the mold press created to kind of give this a little bit more authenticity and then we're going to dress up the edges which I really love to do just kind of give it the appearance that that fin is really there.
six inch bow gills use 10 millimeter eyes. Why is that important? Well, for one, we left the eye in this bait. If you remember back to the start of the video, we left the eye in. And I'm leaving this on the card, but I'm making an imprint below it. It absolutely does not have to be perfect but get it as round as you can. The way I like to try and do that, if this makes any sense at all, is if I were working on like a, a sewing machine or something, um, I just move the card around and don't move the knife a whole lot. And that helps get a rounder hole on the imprint that we just made. Now, here's what we're gonna do with it. Back over here, we're going to make our own custom eyes right on this bait. It's not going to be fancy. doesn't need to be fancy. Yes, they were 10 millimeter. Okay. Just a little bit of paint in the cup. Pull that PSI back down to around 10. And make sure you do that on a space enough to where you can put this right down on top of your eye socket and your eye. Voila. That's clean, folks. Doesn't get much cleaner than that. Second verse, same as the first. Lay that on. directly from above. It's the only way you can do it. Pull that off. You're left with this really nice clean eye. They have goldish yellow eyes with just a hint of red in them and a fairly prominent pupil that looks to be pretty much black. So I've got some pineapple pearlized in the paint cup. I've got a very low PSI. We always do a test to make sure there's no overspray or splatter coming out. I might even want to reduce this down just a bit more. And again, get as centered as you can on this bait. And then start spraying. And then just do the other side. It does not have to be super dark. We got the yellow in. I'm going to add some red. Bring that pressure way back down. And we're going to do the same thing. We just want to make sure there's no overspray and that we're spraying red. And I'm just going to add a little bit at the bottom and shoot it across the eyeball. Same thing on the bottom. It's a very light spray, you guys. I hope you guys can see that. Sorry about that. I was concentrating on what I was doing. You guys might have been a little bit out of frame on that. Now we have the two-tone eye. I'll bring that up just a little bit. And now we need a pupil. I'm going to do the Q-tip trick for the pupil on this one, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. And I want to get a press first because I want to see how big that pupil is going to get. I'm just going to lay the Q-tip right back in the paint and bring that up. Center this as best as I can. There's that pupil. Do the same thing again on the other side, centered. 
And there's that pupil. It's even facing forward. Good deal. Now, if we really want to get crazy, if it looks like it's going up in any direction, this has dried out just a bit. We'll see if we can pull that up. We'll see if we can get that like you would see in some going down that way. And then kind of bringing it forward. This is a seriously tricked out eye. You don't want to do that all the time, but once this has got that coat over it, that clear coat, it's it's going to pop. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this has been my interpretation of a Mayan cichlid in between the adult and juvenile stage, starting to develop that color, but it still has those very prominent dark stripes on it. I was able to do that on this six inch bullgill. I decided not to do a whole lot of accenting on the gill plate. If you look at this reference photo one more time, it shows that it's really not dark like most of them would be. But I did accent the uh, pectoral fins a little bit. We started with that red base and then built up from there. I added a little bit of paint on the tail. It's not going to hurt anything. We don't clear coat the tail. We don't do any of that with it. And the paint, yeah, it's going to come off eventually. Um, this bait is going to get the snot knocked out of it in South Florida. I have no doubt. We did two-tone eyes and uh, put that little area of uh, pupil in. It was all by hand. We used a stencil, which basically I just cut around a 10 millimeter eye. And that is what I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the view. I hope I was able to teach you a couple of tricks today. I hope that you can add this bait into your repertoire. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Mean it. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Baits.